If you have builder grade closet doors like the ones right behind me, these do not look good. They're not stylish or cute. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take your builder grade closet doors and turn them into something way more modern. I'm going to add style to these closet doors and it's going to give this closet and bedroom a new and refreshing look. It's gonna be on trend and these will look very high end. This transformation will improve the entire look of these closet doors completely. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany. Today I'm teaching you how to Wayne Scott your builder grade closet doors. Doesn't this look so much better than before? If you find this video helpful, please consider liking my video and subscribing to my channel. Okay, let me show you exactly how I created this. I already kind of had in my head an idea what I wanted to do with the closet doors. I just wasn't for sure on the wood. I was either going to do a board and batten design or I was going to do the wainscoting design. I decided to go with the wainscoting design and the first thing I had to do was go to my local box store. I happened to go to Menards and I just started looking around for trim, comparing prices, what I thought would look the best. I ended up going with a seven foot stop in pine. It is three eighths of an inch thick and one and a quarter inches wide. I really like that it has the straight edge on one side and the bevel look on the other side. You can definitely go with the half rounds here as the half rounds work with the wainscoting design. I just like the thicker beveled edge. I think it gives it a way higher end and overall better look. You're gonna wanna start by removing all of the hardware from the door after you pull it out of the closet frame. Here, these builder grade closet doors have this tiny little gold circular piece where you stick your finger inside. It doesn't really have much utility. It doesn't look good. So I'm pulling it out here with a flat head screwdriver and a hammer. And then I'm taking some spackle and I'm filling the hole. Um, I'm putting a generous amount of spackle in the hole. And when this dries, I will be sanding it down. One thing about this project is there's quite a bit of sanding. While you can paint doors, trim, and just about anything without sanding, I highly recommend sanding before you do. This is going to increase the longevity of whatever it is you're painting. So those high traffic areas are going to be less prone to chipping. Before you start painting, make sure you give everything a good wipe down. We want to make sure there's no dust and grime in between the paint and the wood. For this project, I'm using Dutch Boys Cabinet Door in Trim Paint in Bright White. I've worked with this paint on numerous occasions and it really does have a good application, especially when it comes to exactly what it says, Cabinet Door in Trim Paint. Um, as long as you sand, you're gonna have really great adhesion. I'm just using a small roller and I'm being conscious, making sure that I'm painting very thin so I'm not gonna have paint lines. You don't necessarily have to go in the same direction or with the wood grain here as long as you're being conscious of what I just said. Last time when I was over here, I filled this uh, hole with, with spackle and I just sanded it down. It's feeling pretty smooth. So I'm gonna leave it like this and we're gonna throw some paint on there. Hopefully I won't have to do any more. I mean, it doesn't, I can't really feel that it's there, but I don't know, it kind of looks dramatic right now. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna get the rest of this painted up. Probably gonna get one to two coats on it. And then, um, I'll measure and cut the trim and we're gonna do some wing scoting. Yay! In total for this project, I ended up doing three coats of paint. This first and second coat. 
I think that this is going to cover up pretty nicely with a couple more coats of paint. When it came time to lay the trim on the door, I went five inches in from the left and then five inches in from the right and then six inches from the bottom and six inches from the top. And I used a carpenter square to mark all the way around. So by the time I was done, I had a drawn out rectangle on my door. Before taking my trim to the saw, I always mark the 45 degree angle on the trim with a pen or pencil. So I'm not confused when I take it out to the saw which 45 degree angle I should be cutting. To complete this project, I'm using Gorilla Glue wood glue. I had two edges, the beveled edge and the flat edge, so I had to use two beads of glue. I also have access to a brad nailer and an air compressor, so I am nailing the wood along with the wood glue to ensure proper adhesion. If you don't have access to a brad nailer and an air compressor, you can definitely do this with just the wood glue and the caulking. That should work just fine for you. One thing to remember when you're caulking is make sure you're caulking the outer seam and the inner seam. On the first door that I did, I actually completely forgot to do the inside seam. It just gives it a nicer finish. Also make sure you buy paintable caulking as you are gonna need to paint this trim white or whatever color you decide to go with. Once the caulking is dry, it is okay to paint. So I'm just going around and painting with very thin coats until I think this looks finished. Here is your refresher on what builder grade closets look before projects like this. Ew, like these do not even look appealing. They're so boring and ugly. I am so happy with how this project turned out. It was my first time wainscoting and I really think I nailed it. And honestly, it was pretty easy. If you guys found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, let me know. And don't come for me that the second door isn't up yet. I'm still working on it. You can catch it on my Instagram. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Yes.